Gold, silver, platinum, and palladium does the body good. I'm going to talk about the health benefits of precious metals. And we're going to answer the question as well. Is it healthy to stack precious metals? We'll cover all of that and more as we explore. Now we'll cover the question about stacking precious metals for its health benefits later on in the video. But first, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the health benefit <clears throat> of these metals, silver and gold and platinum and palladium in medicine. But we're going to focus here first on gold. You know, gold has a quite a bit of medical history throughout a time. Uh, historical medical texts and archaeological discoveries have evidence proving the diverse use of precious metals, such as gold and healing, from topical applications to ingestion remedies. In most civilizations, the practice of using gold as medicine was not only because of its medicinal properties, but also for its cultural and symbolic significance of this precious metal. And there's historic precedence here, and we're going to, as we reference a piece here from Francois Moreau about the nature of gold in medicine. So gold is the first metal we're going to take a look at here and the health benefits throughout history. It has a precedent throughout its use as ancient medicine. Um, in ancient civilizations, it held a prominent place both in value and in medical practices and remedies. Um, and the first place we're going to look at is indeed in China. China is believed to be the first to incorporate gold into various medicinal preparations. The Chinese people regarded it as an immortal substance and extensively used it for its healing properties. Going back to the ancient Han Dynasty, the aristocrats were known to use gold leaf and powder in herbal remedies and medicinal tonics. And then we move to Greece. In ancient Greece, the renowned physician Hippocrates, which that's the uh, often referred to as the father of modern medicine. It's also the family name for the Hippocratic Oath as well. Also recognized the medicinal value of gold. He documented the use of gold in treating a in a variety of ailments, including wounds, ulcers, and even tuberculosis. The Greeks believed that gold possessed unique qualities that could restore health and balance to the body. Pretty, pretty amazing. But the Roman Empire's use of it was also highly regarded for its medicinal properties. The physician and philosopher Galen, who made significant contributions to medical theory and practice, advocated for the use of gold in treating various diseases. Galen believed that gold had a rejuvenating effect on the body and could promote longevity. Longevity. And the thing is, is longevity is something that uh, we all kind of attain for. It had a rejuvenating effect, and gold significant in ancient cultures extended beyond its physical properties. It held symbolic value as a representation of wealth, power, and divine influence with this metal. The use of gold in medicine was often intertwined with religious or spiritual beliefs, <clears throat> reflecting the holistic approach to healing prevalent in those times. Now, we know we too how we also take that into account with spirits and food, other food. In fact, you've seen many restaurants, high-end restaurants, coat their food with gold leaf and how it can be ingested, especially with uh, things like colloidal gold. And we know that colloidal silver is a thing as well, too. The gold can actually be ingested or it can be paired with certain spirits like Goldschlager here. Yes, indeed. Some might find this drink a therapeutic with cinnamon schnapps with some gold leaf that can be ingested although i would say that likely it can be abused and people can get rather drunk off of this very very quickly but nonetheless i just go to show you how gold can be utilized in in applications such as um, even being used in alcohol for essentially a gimmick but good things yes indeed pretty wild <clears throat> so that's how gold can be utilized and how it had been utilized throughout history and even into ancient history. 
Um, and now it does have unique properties and interactions with the human body, which is quite fascinating. Uh, gold possesses a remarkable set of properties that make it an intriguing element for medical applications. And one of the key attributes of gold is its exceptional stability. Gold does not corrode or tarnish unlike any other metal, uh, making it highly inert and resistant to degradation. This stability ensures that gold-based compounds remain intact and retain their therapeutic properties over extended periods, allowing for sustained and effective treatment. Gold's bio biocompatibility is another critical factor in its medicinal use. It exhibits a low reactivity towards biological systems, minimizing the risk of adverse reactions or toxicity. This biocompatibility enables gold-based compounds to interact with the body's cells, tissues, and biological fluids without causing harm. And so the scientists understanding this, this has led to uh, where we are at with current research and innovations with gold-based specific medicine. It holds a great importance in the field of modern medicine. Its applications range from facilitating wound healing to aiding in cancer therapies. The distinctive characteristics of gold, particularly when utilized in small amounts, contribute significantly to the progress made in medical imaging and immunotherapy. And this is quite fascinating to see this approach. And there's a new promising tool in treating diseases through an innovative approach called photodynamic therapy. In this therapy, gold nanoparticles infiltrate cancer cells and when exposed to light, generate heat that effectively targets and destroys tumors. This is research that I've actually talked about before on this channel. That's called the Keynesian method. Uh, it's truly fascinating how such tiny particles can have a significant impact on medical advancements. An engineering porous gold nano disc shows great potential in combating infections by effectively killing bacteria through laser-induced thermal shock. In the future, these nanoparticles could be utilized to coat medical instruments like catheters, allowing localized laser treatments at the patient's bedside. Then we also have its use targeting and, and taking care of diagnostics and treatment for like cancer. One of the most promising breakthroughs is the domain of cancer diagnosis and treatment. Cancer DNA has a unique 3D structure that is attracted to gold. And when this DNA is present, nanoparticles change color. This change can be detected quickly, enabling simple and rapid detection tests. The technology could revolutionize cancer detection, making it possible to detect cancer in as little as 10 minutes. That is remarkable to see that kind of science and, and innovation occurring there. And so you have other applications that are, that are coming in the future and building upon what we've talked about, diagnostic applications engineered to detect other diseases, enabling sensitive and accurate diagnostic tests for early disease detection and monitoring. It can also be used for tissue engineering and regenerative medicine, which is also a very fascinating field. And also personalized medicine. This one is, I think, one of the most intriguing because it'll be integrating gold-based therapies with emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. Also, gene editing and nanofabrication can usher in an era of personalized medicine where treatments are tailored to an individual's genetic and physiological characteristics. Also, with the use of anti-inflammatory applications. We know inflammation is a huge problem, especially with chronic pain. So research exploring how gold-based compounds can modulate the immune response, leading to the development of safer and newer drugs for conditions like arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and asthma. And then obviously, of course, advancements in nanotechnology with gold and other metals as well too is remarkable to see how that is building out. <clears throat> so. That's, what, that's essentially what gold is doing. Let's talk about some of these other metals that uh, medicine can be used. Let's go next to silver. We all know silver is, has the most diverse uses out there um, in industry, but it's also as well in, in science and, and in, the bio, in the biomedical field as well. It has been known for its antimicrobial properties for literally thousands of years. 
and it is being incorporated into wound dressings, coatings for medicinal devices, and antimicrobial agents for topical applications. You've heard about the old wives' tale about putting in a dime into a jug of milk or a quarter. Well, you do that because of the silver antimicrobial properties that keeps the milk uh, from spoiling for a longer amount of time. It can also be used for wound healing. Silver nanoparticles have shown promise in promoting wound healing and reducing the risk of infections. And silver also can be used for diagnostics applications. <clears throat> silver nanoparticles are also being used to, in diagnostic assays and imaging techniques, enabling more accurate disease detection. Silver is a wonder metal in that way, and not to mention all the medical electronic devices that have silver um, in them throughout, just as they do in, in industry. Now let's move ahead to platinum and palladium. These metals are remarkable for a myriad of different reasons and how they can help to not only as far as platinum is used to detect cancer, but also we have delivery systems as well too and as a catalyst. So uh, platinum specifically is known when it's in compounds such as a size Platin and carboplatin are widely used in chemotherapy for various types of cancers today. These compounds work by interfering with the DNA of cancer cells, preventing their replication and causing cell death. But also we have drug delivery systems with platinum that their nanoparticles are being investigated for their potential use as drug delivery systems, allowing for targeted and controlled release of therapeutic agents, much like how gold is or platinum can be utilized in that regard. Now, there are certain aspects of platinum that make it unique among the other metals for as much of it is on the earth and in the crust to mine it. It is the most dense of all of those metals of the common precious metals, even though platinum is quite rare, much rarer than gold. Uh, that density, I think, could be a quite an advantage, especially with nanotechnology for use. Now, palladium, which isn't quite as dense, but still in the same family as platinum, is also a good use as a catalyst. We know it in regards to catalytic converters, but in medicine, in drug synthesis, it targets a crucial role in pharmaceutical uh, synthesis, enabling efficient and selective reactions to produce complex drug molecules. It also has a role in diagnostic imaging, Platinum-based contrast agents are being explored for use in diagnostic imaging techniques such as magnetic resonance imaging. You know it as MRIs to enhance image quality and improve disease visualization. So there's an amazing thing. Those are some of the uses that gold, silver, platinum, and palladium have uh, for uh, medicine and for your health overall. You know, we know about colloidal silver. We know about some preventative health techniques for some of these metals as well, too, which is quite remarkable. But what about stacking these metals? Is stacking gold, silver, platinum, and palladium good for your health? I would say yes, because it makes you feel better. It takes away from the stress of the markets of what the, what's going on with our dollar these days. When you hold gold and silver, platinum, and palladium, you are preserving your wealth. You can rest easy at night knowing that you got something of value there. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. I would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.